Welcome to Ayehu iShare. Today, we're going to get familiar with the first steps in using iShare's Workflow Designer. To get us started designing a new workflow, we're going to click the perfectly named Design New Workflow button. Here's the iShare Workflow Designer. Now, on the left side, you have a toolbox. Well, it's kind of more of a tool truck. It's got more than 500 built-in actions, divided cleverly into different IT categories. For example, there's Active Directory, with actions like unlocking accounts and resetting passwords, and file and folder actions that include functions like deleting files and copying files. Now, let's hop right over to the right side and we'll discover built-in templates divided into sections as well. For example, just like the actions, we've got templates related to Active Directory and to files and folders. What's the difference? The actions on the left side are the basic building blocks. We've used them to create some terrific templates to save you time thinking through each step. Now, in order to start your workflow, we're going to drag and drop one of these actions from the toolbox into the designer pane. Don't feel like sorting through 500 actions? Don't worry about it. You can just search through them by name using the search field here on top. Let's look for service status action, for example. Now, for most actions, you assign specific parameters. For example, the get service status action will receive the service name. Most actions require a server name, so we'll do that. Now, in order to create a new device, we press the little plus button here and enter the device details. Test serve, not too original, but it'll do the trick. Now, each action returns an output. It can be either a text, an integer, or a table. In order to know what the action return value is, we can open up its help page by right-clicking right here on its action. So let's head over to the Workflow Controls section. Think of this as the Traffic Cop utilities, the stuff related to the workflow's logic. Things like if, else, go to, while, parallel, and run workflow. We'll drag and drop the if, else structure and define the return values from the previous action. Now those return value actions can either be predefined values like success, failure, true, false, etc. or user-defined values after actions above this one return integers or strings. First, let's make sure that at least one branch is defined as the default, right there. Here, we'll pick running or stopped, the two possible choices when checking whether a service is up or down. After defining the if-else, we'll drag and drop the action you'd like to execute in case the service is in fact stop. And yes, our most logical step in that case is to start it, so we'll use the start service action. Simple enough, let's execute the workflow by pressing the run button. Here we go. Now take a look at the bottom of the screen. That handsome table down there is our active log screen. Watch it closely and you can track the results of each step of our little workflow here. And yes, we see that the service is stopped and therefore it'll be started. We can confirm that right over there. Now here's where it gets interesting. Remember that this process can be part of a comprehensive workflow that deals with general troubleshooting and recovery of critical systems. This workflow can either be scheduled or event-driven, meaning it'll be initiated according to an external alert. In order to perform this operation or any other action on a list of servers, we'll have to use a while action, which is placed in the workflow controls. We'll drag and drop that while action, plunk it right on top there, and place the entire structure inside the loop, one big happy family. Now, we've got a bunch of servers that we want to keep serving, so let's choose the source of our server's list. It can be a text file, an Excel file, database query, Active Directory query, etc. For our example, let's keep it simple, and we'll use a one-column Excel file. That first row in the Excel file will always be used as the column name and won't be counted. So no, there's no server called server name. That would be silly. Now, server1, server2, those are good names. In order to review the table dynamically, we'll use the get rows count action, which tells iShare the number of rows in the Excel file. And that number will be used in the while action as our counter. Now, here's a key concept in iShare. 
each action returns a value which is stored in a variable named right after the action name in that colored bar over there. Each action output can then be used as the input for any of the following actions. We'll do that here using read Excel 1. You'll notice here and elsewhere that a variable is actually an action name wrapped with a percent sign on either side. The exit while activity receives the get row count variable. Now it's time to use the get cell value action in order to extract the server name dynamically. This action extracts the value from a table using three parameters, table name, row number, and column number. The table is stored in our read Excel variable. The row number it's looking for changes with each iteration, of course, as we move along. So it's being stored in the exit while variable. Oh, and if you're keeping up, you've guessed that the column number is one since we only have one column in our Excel file. Let's rename this variable server name so it'll be clearer next time we need it. It'll be used from now on as our device name. Now finally, to make this whole exercise worthwhile, we can't forget to update that service start action to use our shiny new server name variable, which will check them all, not just one single server. So let's execute the whole operation on a list of servers by pressing that run button again. And then we'll track its progress again by watching the magic unfold in the active logs. The workflow starts by reading the Excel file, extracts each server, and checks the service status. In case it's down, it starts it. What we're seeing here is each one cycle through in the active logs. And because you probably don't want to stand around clicking a run button around the clock, we can schedule our workflow to run automatically using, well, the schedule workflow button. So I hope you've enjoyed our workflow designer first steps tutorial. For more information, you can find more tutorials and user guides at our website, www.iyehu.com.